number of, of families uh, with second and third generations who've never worked in the city and that unfortunately carries on with some of those families. I think one of the key things that's changed has been the belief and that's belief in the staff, the parents and the children that here is a school where you will achieve and you can achieve. We've travelled across the country to visit five areas where schools are working in innovative and interesting ways to raise attainment and are succeeding in bridging the gap. In this episode we've come to Portsmouth on the south coast to find out what their schools are doing to try and bridge the attainment gap. Portsmouth suffers from areas of urban deprivation with above average levels of child poverty. It might sound incredibly strange but for some of our children we have to see a mile and a half away from our school and lots of them by the age of seven have never actually been to visit it. And so it's important that we provide that opportunity where perhaps the parents haven't seen that there's been a need to. And for me that's a great sadness, but it's also a great joy that we're able to bring that richness to them. Portsmouth has had a history of urban deprivation. Being a, being a port, a port city, it's, um, it does seem to follow ports around. If we have a look at Liverpool and Bristol and even London to a degree, you do find that there's significant urban deprivations in the ports around the country. And we have suffered for that over the years for many different reasons. We are a small island, but the most heavily populated island in Western Europe, for example. This has brought its own constraints, lack of space, lack of resources, and also lack of opportunity because so many jobs went into the Navy and to the dockyard, which meant that there weren't so many opportunities for other business and activities to take place in the city. Faced with these local problems, St John's Primary School and next door St Edmund's Secondary School are working to raise attainment by engaging parents, increasing attendance, and helping to ease the transition from primary to secondary. Getting the students to regularly attend school is one of this school's key strategies for raising attainment and one which head teacher Catherine Hobbs believes has helped move her school from the bottom of the league tables to being one of the top five schools in Portsmouth. Attendance has been an issue for us, not drastically, but we're sort of a fraction below the national average. Um, year on year it's been very difficult to push us above the 94% and it was an issue raised for us at our last Ofsted. The children are aware that uh, on a weekly basis in our assembly we'll announce the class that has the greatest attendance during the week. We've all got something to offer but we can only offer it if we're all here and we're all here every day. This has led to some of the children almost saying to their peers that it's not fair we didn't get the award because of you and so we've actually improved perhaps the attendance of some of our children who would have the occasional day off when they didn't really need to. And don't forget that we're all working towards our attendance cup that we're going to get at the end of term. So in third place it was a joint year two and a joint year one so I think they deserve a round of applause. Right from our very first reception parents meeting I make it quite clear that we really do expect the children only to have time off if they really are ill and under a doctor. It's a firm and fair policy that I have with sort of the parents and the children. Congratulations to Year 6, so well done Year 6. Well, During the eight years that I've been at St John's I've seen dramatic changes and I think one of the key things that's changed has been the belief and that's belief in the staff, the parents and the children that here is a school where you will achieve and you can achieve and you'll be given the support to do so. St John's School offers family learning classes to help engage local parents. Um, I was watching every most people had their fingers and that, it was like they were putting their finger on the word and copying it, put their finger on the word copying it, They're just like a child would do. And they're physically just concentrating on their, on their writing. Yeah, so it's quite tricky for them. It's not the family learning programme is a very, very exciting programme and one that I know has enriched the life of the children, adults and staff here at St John's. 
We offer a termly workshop to all parents in every year group. Can I want you to change to the hand that you're not used to usually? <laughs> it's an opportunity to show to the parents to make them more aware of what goes on within literacy and numeracy. So what shall we write then? Who do you want to write about? We come in on every Wednesday the next few weeks and just we have a little joint session in the morning at one in the afternoon. The, the big part is the, the language for me because I'm good in writing and everything in Spanish but not in English so that's why I'm here and to improve my English as well. I mean, it's just... The changing fortunes of these two schools is being supported by a wider strategy developed by Portsmouth City Council. The number of, of families uh, with second and third generations who've never worked in the city and that unfortunately carries on with some of those families so we're trying to break some of those barriers down and make sure that they see that there is a future for them, there are opportunities for them and they should try and grab some of those opportunities. Right, good afternoon everybody. I'm here today to tell you a little bit about the Community Improvement Partnerships. As you know, schools in the past, and schools still, can be very much working behind closed doors. And it's sometimes very difficult for agencies to get involved with schools. Today, Mark Scarborough is discussing an integrated strategy at a meeting for voluntary community workers. Now, some people might say, well, hang on a minute. It's about schools, isn't it? Why are you using the word community? Well, it works both ways, because if we used it school improvement partnerships, that would switch off organisations who thought it was just about schools. In actual fact, it's a lot more than schools. It is about extending into the community. Community improvement partnerships have made a difference already, and we're measuring different ranges of impact that it's had in the city as a whole. The community improvement partnerships divide up Portsmouth into five different areas. Each area has a project manager to coordinate local services for the schools. St Edmunds and St John's are both supported by Helen Corkery. So today was really about um, though the representatives of the community and voluntary sector whose work involves um, working with children and young people coming together as a group so they could really speak with one voice about what the issues are for them, about how they would like to be more involved um, in the work of the Community Improvement Partnerships across the city and their views as to how that can best be achieved. St Edmunds Secondary has felt a real benefit from this newly integrated community support. In the past you, the schools were very much isolated so when you had problems and you wanted to ring uh, social services or, or health people it was very difficult to get hold of them and you didn't have link people. Now you, can, you know who they are you, and you have met with them before. Um, so the, the turnaround is, is faster, the communication is better and, and the child is at the centre of, of everything that we do. Easing the transition from primary to secondary is seen as another key solution to bridging the attainment gap. St Edmund's head teacher Isabel O'Mara is actively working to engage prospective Year 7 students. We will have visits from uh, pupils in Year 5 and Year 6 who come in for taster days. Um, we have uh, staff who go in and do presentation to the primary schools, to the pupils, to the parents. So by the time they come to year seven, uh, they already know the school, they know the layout, they know a lot of the teachers. And we do what we can here at this school to make sure that they, they do feel eased into it. Now, what sort of uh, feedback did you get from the children this morning about how they settled in? My job is to make sure that before they come, I have all the information necessary to ensure that they're um, correctly grouped, that the curriculum that we're planning for them is going to be appropriate and that they, they feel happy and confident and settled as quickly as possible. I work closely with Colin Flanagan, the uh, deputy head there and also class six teacher. Um, so we have regular um, contact through our joint activities and the curriculum initiatives that we do together. Along with working to improve transition, Isabel O'Mara wanted to raise boys' attendance and attainment. 
Part of the solution has been the use of a mobile skate park at the school. The most important thing is uh, creating an environment that pupils want to come to in the morning. They get up and they want to say, I can't wait to come to school. And therefore you need to make school uh, much more attractive and to have exciting lessons. to have things that are going on outside lessons as well because we have a lot of children who are not keen to come to lessons and uh, we need to attract them by doing things that perhaps they like. Boys' attendance greatly improved on the days that the skate park was running and the school is now looking for funding for a permanent skate park. Raising aspirations is seen to be a key element in closing the attainment gap. These year six children from St John's Primary are visiting the University of Portsmouth as part of the Up For It scheme. A lot of the areas of Portsmouth are, are areas where entry into higher education has traditionally been quite low. Right, there's a question in your book that name three things you can see in the library. I think it's important for, for all children to learn that, that they can do what they want to do and higher education could help them to do that so it's just that we were one of the first universities really that, that started to do work with primary schools because at that age that's the age where they're starting to think about what they might want to do when they're older. For them to actually go and, and, and see the university hands-on um, and experience what university courses are like um, it just raises awareness that there's something beyond GCSEs beyond A levels for them for them to do. The children come in for their year six visit and they start off, um, we meet them in, in the square um, and then we bring them down to a, a lecture, so they have an academic lecture, um, it can be based around any of the subjects that we study here. So today's was dentistry, so they got to have a go at filling a tooth and learn about what dental hygienists do, uh, have a look at the phantom heads. If I'm going in the mouth here they can see exactly what I'm doing, okay? So when I'm looking around the mouth with a mirror and showing... And then finally, the they get the exciting bit, they get to go and graduate on the, on the Guildhall steps, so they get to put on a miniature gown and they can go and um, graduate and throw their hats in the air. So it's quite good fun. OK, let's hear it for Joel! I think it's very important that they do it now, before they go to secondary school, so that when they do go to secondary school, they have something, a vision, to work towards, and they actually knuckle down and work towards whatever it is they want to do in later life. St Edmund's secondary are working to raise their attainment by easing the transition from primary to secondary and engaging their students. If school isn't exciting for them then they won't come to school and if it's not exciting they won't work and they won't get engaged. St John's primary are rewarding attendance and engaging family support. We realise that children only get one chance in life. We've been privileged that parents have trusted that chance to us and it's important by working with the parents, the staff and the children together that we actually ensure that everybody achieves their potential.